that I hear. Fuck me, my arsehole's going. It's that time of year again, where we get our annual dose of payday content injected straight into the jugular via an age-old tradition called Crime Fest. But Breaking News is the name of the 2018 iteration and is the first big Crime Fest that our current payday story writer, Wordsmith, has laid out the groundwork for. Shortening the event to 8 days and continuing with the content every other day format, what happened in the first 4 days and what is coming around the corner? In the lead up to the event, an email from the FBI files titled Block Domains discusses the traffic from the Beyond Yesterday domain. We learned that the Kataru have been sending messages to different government bodies, and not just the FBI, and that it goes all the way to the Oval Office. It also mentions that they were trying to hack a computer in a local bakery. Vlad's of course. The event is formatted in a very nice way, similar to the Secret is Really Real event, but more polished. Since this time around, instead of following the ramblings of a conspiracy-obsessed madman, we are following Rachel Riggs, a reporter from CNN News. The Corruption in Congress news report mentions that Senator Simmons, aka The Elephant, wants to create a grand jury to investigate the corruption of the government. Day 2 released the Hell's Island Loud Only Heist, and if you haven't had the chance to play it, now's your last chance before I spoil everything. Now that the majority of you have stayed, the elephant seems to know an awful lot about things and is hell bent on helping us take our revenge. Giving Locke intel enabled him to figure out where Bane is being kept, the Klutzop Fort Prison, an old abandoned World War II prison of war that's been in the possession of murky water since the 70s. Entering via the sewers, we are welcomed by the dentist and a group of murkies. It is by all means confirmed 100% that the dentist is our main enemy, and that he is after Baldwin's Lament. Things have been getting a bit crazy, and I just wanted to remind everyone that Baldwin's Lament seems to be both our goal and the dentist's. The best thing about this heist is that now, the Murkies have their own variants of every unit in the game, from light units to specials, and even the medic. They look amazing, but we're here for something better. This is, in actual fact, a Bane Breakout heist. The disappointment from Hoxton Breakout back in 2014 that we didn't actually break into a prison has now been addressed. The dentist tells us that if we manage to get Bane away from here, he is all ours, as he's looking at the bigger picture. If you manage to take Bane away from here, he's all yours. It is the moral choice, after all. After releasing Bane from his cell and booking it, the dentist tells us that another player has entered the field, telling Kento that Bane is escaping and to stop him. And so, another player enters the board. Kento. Bane is getting away. Stop him, would you please? As we chase after Bane, we are left to look at the bloody path of dead murkies he single-handedly killed within seconds. We're talking three dozers killed, a cloaker whose face has been smashed through a sink, and so, so much more. Once we reach the roof, we finally get to see Bane, holding the limp body of Kento. He gives a cheeky, Hey guys, I've been waiting for you. How do I look? Then collapses. Locke sneaks in from where he was hiding to help carry Bane to the escape chopper, whilst we clear the way forward. Bane mumbles a fair bit talking about the mine gold from the First World Bank and some other things whilst fading in and out of consciousness. After successfully completing the mission, Locke debriefs us saying that it seems like the Murkies have infected Bane with some sort of virus. This is probably why the dentist didn't mind too much if we escaped with Bane. And if you've been paying attention, the highest icon for Day 6 is a hospital, so guess where we're going for our next heist? to Mercy Hospital to find some sort of cure. I am getting ahead of myself here. The breaking news site also has a few other bits for us. Rachel makes a call to the elephant, but instead it is the dentist who picks up, asking her if she likes cupcakes and that she should visit the Cossack Bakery. She then realizes that it's actually Dr. Hellman, the name supposedly he gives as the dentist. The cupcake refers to a minor update to the safe house from day one, in which empty wrappers surround the diamond. These two bits of information imply that it was Vlad who has sent us the diamond. 
and perhaps he was even the original client that wanted it in the first place. A bunch of voice lines were added for Chains, Duke, and surprisingly, Hoxton, who now has the best line that sums up how I feel. Kataru, mouldy old artifact? What the fuck is that all about, eh? I got into this to make money, not save the fucking British Museum. A lot of the dialogue Duke says is actually stuff I covered in my Obsidian Plate video. Speaking of that video, do you remember this thing that I said about the dentist? You can make out the shimmer of glasses watching. This would be the dentist. I haven't really touched on him, but there is a ton of stuff to suggest that he is immortal or has multiple incarnations. Well, one of his lines from Hell's Island heavily backs up this idea. When you've been around for a while, you learn to let things go. And now for the part that I have been avoiding talking about due to so many avenues it can go. The Kings and the Watchers. Here are some important voice lines you'll need to understand my next theory. I'm fairly sure now that Baldwin was a Watcher, but I'm not sure which King he served. I think we can all agree that Kento serves the dentist, or rather, healer, as the texts call him. Pretty sure that Bane was next in line to serve the elephant, but obviously the dentist wasn't having any of it. I kind of doubt Bane would be willing to serve anyone, to be honest. So I had a dream last night. A gorgeous woman came to me and said, The scribe, guardian of the Silver Sphere, returns. Two dead watchers, one missing king. What do we do with that? Vlad, man. Whenever he was around, he's hounding me like some anxious doberman. Fuck does he want? Last time I had drinks with Vlad, he starts going on about getting back to writing. Something about memoirs or some shit? The fuck is up with that? The Scribe King was always a mystery. We could never figure out who, if anyone, it was supposed to refer to, in terms of concrete evidence. With these lines, it really helps support the idea that I've had for a long time that Vlad could be the Scribe King. Ever since my Q&A session with Wordsmith during the Secret Is Really Real event, he mentioned he had a fond spot for the original characters in the Payday cinematic trailers. Vlad was the only one who hadn't had a place to fit in this new generation narrative, until now. And that means that I wasn't too far off with my original Bane theories. Vlad isn't the traitor, he could be the hero. I had come up with some crazy theories after Henry's Rock, but never got anything down on paper due to the lack of hard evidence. I did have an idea that if Vlad was indeed the Scribe King, who could his Watcher have been? Of all things, my favourite thought that I entertained was the fact that the Commissar could have been his modern day Watcher, for the fact that they are both Russian, and the Dentist, with all his political power, couldn't deal with one guy who had control over a District Attorney. And the Commissar's real name is Grigori, which actually translates into some form of Watcher in Russian. There are a lot of details to cover, and not enough time to discuss if I want to get this video out pretty quickly. Another point to address is that Duke mentions seismic waves coming from possibly the White House, which we know is where the Ark of the Watcher is being kept. The Obsidian Plate is sending out an electromagnetic field also. The icon for the last day of the event is the White House. It seems highly likely that we are going to be getting a 1600 pen heist and discovering what the Ark of the Watcher is. Speaking of coordinates, the Dream Temple location out near Bamfek Nowhere is actually uh, having an interesting time. We've just received a breaking report of a suspected nuclear detonation in the Southern Pacific Ocean, 1600 miles off the coast of Antarctica. A supposed nuclear explosion has occurred there with a massive whirlpool appearing and dissipating shortly afterwards. As well as a tremor that seems to have emanated deep below the surface. No tsunami warning has been issued as of yet. It seems that the Dream Temple might be awakening from its deep sea slumber. The President has ordered the military and emergency personnel to be ready to act if needed. There is a lot going on, and this really is only the tip of it all. So if you want to see my real-time investigations, don't forget about twitch.tv forward slash randomkenny underscore. I will be live streaming all the new content as soon as I can, and you can figure out what the bloody hell is going on alongside me. As Wes Smith said to me on Discord, Hey, uh, you don't want to miss Crimefest this time round. You really don't.
bloody fucking Nephilim. Why couldn't they have just stayed in the scripture?